The old gods have forsaken us. We were left alone to survive and face the darkness surrounding us. I'm not sure that's the right kind of voice. I assume that's the right kind of voice. Maybe it's the high priest here talking? I didn't even know. Anyway, the, the first thing I want to emphasize is I really like how this game looks. And uh, don't take this the wrong way, Joy Masher guys. But uh, it looks sort of deliberately ugly. Like there's all these weird... I think it looks like EGA graphics to me. I think it's supposed to be a simulation of a, a NES. But it's got these weird contrasts and kind of unnatural colors and all these stark contrasts. And it looks kind of weird and ugly, but in a good way. Like they've actually made it work with the themes and things. So and it's pretty clever. So I stand by my principles that, um, that EGA old school graphics look kind of ugly. Like, VGA was nice, but in, anyway, but but you can make it work, and you can have the ugliness work for you, so there. Uh, as you can see, I've actually played this game considerably before. I've I've won it before, but uh, yeah, that is what all the cool loot looks like. But let's start again to get a, a better sense of what this game is really like. Uh, I, I've got veteran mode. Apparently is uh, even more grueling. I had quite a bit of trouble with this game actually. I got rather lost and uh, had trouble with it. Maybe I was not on top of my game at the time. Haggis used to be a fearless soldier until war was no longer needed. I guess not the Soul Calibur 2 narrator here. He had lost the one he loved, but a child remained, a son. To provide for him, Haggis often left the village to hunt alone. He hunted and sat by campfires countless times before. Still, this night felt different. The fire talked to him. The man felt empty as if his essence was drawn away and there was nothing for him in this world. That warm light was the only reality and it was calling his name. A noise put a stop to those thoughts. I don't know if this is based on Dark Souls or something, if he's uh, having a weird thoughts about bonfires, it might be based on Dark Souls. Or it might just be that bonfires are nice and warm anyway. Something is happening! Something terrible! <laughs> I don't know about those lines, guys. I, I know the people who made this game are Brazilian, and I don't know if the translation is always completely on point. It's basically good, it's just that there's the occasional bit of kind of, you know weariness about the trans uh, translation. Yeah, so here's, here's the map. It looks a lot like uh, Ghosts and Ghouls, or Ghouls and Goblins, or whatever it is it was called. And I think a little bit of Castlevania and Demon's Crest as well, if my uh, if mine eyes did not deceive. Oh, and I think if you gave them money on Kickstarter or something, you can get cool skins to go with it. But let's just let's just go. There we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I love these guys. These guys are nice. They're just... Oh. Hey, what's the bet? Oh, dear. Oh, I'm trying to show off. I'm trying to show off and I paid the price. Yeah, so it's got... Uh, sub weapons, much like Castlevania. And like a lot of these games, it, it gives you the option, I think, of uh, having the old school way of having to hold down up and pressing attack to use the sub-weapons, but I'm using the new school method where you just have a button to press your sub-weapons, because might as well make use of the fancy-ass modern controller I have, I guess. Times change. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little. I will allow times to change just a tad. Mm. Oh. Isn't it got... Nah. Some parts of this game have strange lights in the sky, and for the life of me, I don't know what they are. They're, they're, I mean, they're not a glitch or anything, they're an actual part of the story somehow, but... Yeah. Oh, what? Most bad guys in this game take two hits, at least, because uh, I think it's to avoid you just being able to walk up to them and just smack them once and they're gone, you know? You've got to engage with what they're doing and, and learn their their abilities a bit. Oh. God, these crossbow guys, I swear. I, I just... Uh, I'm not a fan of the crossbow guys. 
we go. And this game does have block pushing puzzles. Normal, I mean, they're they're basically pretty good. I I disapprove quite a bit of block pushing puzzles normally because I mean in something like Wind Waker or something they got really silly with you just pushing blocks around and it's it's always slow you know they've got to communicate that the block is heavy so they just make it kind of slow to push and it kind of just slows things down so it's no fun it's it's just weird silly it's rather unnecessary and you, you never do anything tremendously sophisticated with the blocks either you just kind of put them in place it's it's almost like you I don't know Ow. Oh, I think if you go up to these guys quick, yeah, if you, if you give these guys two confident hits, you can take them out without having to dodge. Oh, and here is like the sweetest character in the whole game, it's Mr. Merchant Man. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's uh, Brazilian for welcome, or if he's just saying welcome in a Brazilian way, or, or what the deal is. I don't really speak any Brazilian. Hey, I'm Mr. Hunter, care for some food? Oh, well, I'm kind of doing a Mark Hamill Joker now. Well, that will be nice, my good lad. Bring me soul orbs and we can strike a deal. Our people are being massacred and you only care for some profit? An old man has to make a living. <laughs> I kind of imagine them laughing like Dark Souls characters in this game, to be honest. That seems appropriate. As they say, it's better to burn out than to fade away. And yeah, I have actually I have personal confirmation from the guys who made this game now on Twitter that they they were inspired a lot by uh, uh, by uh, uh, what's it even called Highlander those movies, which I guess might also be why the hero is called Haggis. Like I guess it's a Scottish thing. It sounds kind of silly to me. I don't know how silly it's supposed to be. But uh, the hero is called Haggis, maybe because everyone's Scottish and has swords and stuff. No. No. Just luckily got perfect positioning. Mwah. Yeah, you see, see what I mean about EGA graphics, though. Like, look, look how weird they look with this this Nezzy color palette. You've got bricks in the background there that are like dark blue and dark red or something like. That is super weird, but you kind of get used to everything being the wrong colour in some ways. It gives this weird, otherworldly look to the whole thing. Yeah, I think this is, this is I think this is more than 16 colours. I'm not quite sure how the NES stuff works. But it's it's definitely not 256, that's for sure. As we all know, things started being a <laughs> got this guy in a loop. Things started to be good when you had 256 colours and sound blaster sound and 320 by 200 pixels. And that is all you need to accomplish anything that's worth accomplishing. So there. You got a key! I always find it a bit weird when uh, like the foreground pauses and then there's always like there's always something in the game that doesn't pause, like there's flames in the background or just as they would say in Dark Souls, the flow of time is convoluted. <laughs> Every time something doesn't make sense in time, I just like to tell myself, the flow of time is convoluted. It just makes everything make more sense. One problem I find with these chests, actually, is if you go over them and uh, hit them, you can kind of, yeah, you see what I mean? You can, you can pick up what's inside them without knowing what was inside them. So it, they ought to have a little notice or something saying, you know, you've got meat come out of them or something, because otherwise you can not know what's going on. I don't think I'm, oh, I, I think, oh yeah, N now I'm going to use my key. Not to use my key. Got to use my key. Take the key to the door. Put it in and turn it about. Oh, we're gonna use my key. It's something trouble me. Oh, we're gonna open the door. Um, open the door to some more. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice cover, Ken. Nice cover. Okay. Um, I mean. I like those guys, I always beat them, unless I'm specifically trying to prove a point somehow. Ha. The 
this is too heavy. Yeah, and this, this game sort of has a bit of a, a Metroid-y Zelda kind of thing. The structure is actually quite clever. They've got multiple levels, but they still have this kind of... Actually, actually to be fair, the structure is just like Demon's Crest. That, that's why I think it's like Demon's Crest. It's got the same kind of multiple levels, but they've got that, that same structure of these Metroid-y levels and things. You know what I'm talking about. Get some soup to restore my strength. Pork shank, pork shank, I think, restores you fully. Well, where is the shank from, even? Is it a leg? That would kind of make sense. It kind of looks more like a chicken leg than a pork leg to me, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm not exactly a farmer. I've heard that there is an underwater path that leads to a lost temple. It sure is bright here. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I don't know, it was more of a, I don't know what that was. Actually, Andre the Black Nerd kind of sounds like that when he laughs, I think. Chief, Gale's men are attacking the village. This is treason! Have you seen my boy? Actually, just look how... Look, I mentioned this a couple of times already, but look how weird the colours are. In a good kind of way. Like, look, he's got like a blue and white face. That's so weird. But that's what they have. Boy, men, who cares about those feeble souls? Is this guy kind of... He looks... He could either have a moustache, or he's just kind of jowly, I'm not even sure. What in the name of the gods are you saying? Gods? Ah, gods are dead, old and new. I am my own god now. I will feast on your flesh and soul. You know what, I kind of picked the right voice for that line, I think. Oh no. And this is where, actually, no, uh, no discussion of this game would be complete without mentioning Berserk. Which is this uh, Japanese comic book that's been... I think it's still in circulation now. I mean, there's still new episodes coming out. But uh, you can't really talk about guys sacrificing their humanity to become horrible demon monsters without uh, talking about Berserk. And, uh, you know, bonus Berserk points if you have uh, a hero with an unreasonably large sword fighting the demon monsters. So I think there, there must be a lot of Berserk influence as well. Proper kind of grim, dark fantasy stuff, Berserk. If you want to find some weird things to look at, it's definitely got some cool visual design stuff there. <laughs> Here it comes. You found the Redstone Shard. You feel strange and uneasy. This beast! How did the chief become it? I'm not even consistent about which voice I'm using, am I? This weird shard traps the beast's soul. What kind of sorcery is this? I must make haste to Gale Castle. I have to find my boy. We have to find my boy. We have no choice. Let's go. Oh, and uh, I think full disclosure, I think that the way they have those red shards that have the demonic power in them, I... I think, in my own game, Super Space Slayer 2, I, I have you collect Chimera Shards, which are also red demonic shards that are meant to win the game. They're the thing you have to collect. I, I'm, I didn't really remember consciously ripping this off, but I think I might have <laughs> taken some inspiration from this game myself. So, uh, you know, good work, Joy Masher, I guess. Good work. Anyway, uh, tune in next time for the next level. I'll see you guys on the next Plasma Beam Let's Play. Good night!